Welcome to Land Academy. I'm Jack Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We show you how to buy real estate for half of what it's worth. And sell it on the internet really fast. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill and, this and this is, is the Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill show, show too. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we're the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price and flipping them for way more. All right, let's get this show started. Jack Butella with Jill DeWitt. Hey there. Welcome to our show today. In this episode, Jill and I talk about choosing a real estate specialization. So it seems kind of basic, but man, it's important. Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. Okay. Joshua asks, in the education program, Jack recommends including agricultural land data in our search criteria. I had decided on a county to send my first mailer to, but I've noticed that the majority of the parcels listed had the land use description of agricultural NEC. Would this be a red flag for targeting this county or could I be looking at this differently? In theory, in theory, I thought having the major percentage of my list focused on residential or recreational would be best. Thanks for any insight. NEC, as I understand it, and I don't know the exact an acronym, I'll look it up during the show and, and uh, try to find out exactly what it stands for, but it, what it generally means is not categorized. That's part not as the N and C is categorized, I think. So, and, and I'll make sure, I'll make absolutely sure. Um, there are no existing, oh, I just found it, no existing category. So, the, it means that the, the assessor thinks it's agricultural, but it's NEC. Mm-hmm. Or they think it's industrial, but it's NEC. So that's your assessor at work, by the way. Yeah, that's your no. taxes. Would this be a red flag? Oh, gosh. <laughs> no, I, I, you know what? But, uh, to answer, directly answer your question, I love NEC property because uh, they don't. Hey, the assessor doesn't really know. I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> we're going right. to let the, the guy who owns it and me, the buyer, we're going to put a price on it real quick. Right. <laughs> so keep that in. Absolutely. Totally. I, the only reason that, that, you know, to directly answer your question again, the only reason I would remove agriculture is if, the, if you're working in a, in a, a very farm, farming intensive county where, you know, farmland is a commodity that's usually pr- priced per acre. If you walk into a bar or a coffee shop somewhere in Kansas and you say, hey, what's the price of uh, an acre go for these days? Everybody will jump right up and say, and they'll they'll be pretty pretty close about it because they mm-hmm. their their answer is going to be very consistent. Oh, it, it goes for about uh, eight thousand dollars an acre, three thousand dollars an acre, thirty two hundred fifty. So, if you're working those areas, you want to price your mailer the way that we price houses. You know, you want to come come in under that number, decide what it is, and come in sixty seventy percent under that number. And traditionally, what you're saying too is farmland is much higher than just out there rural residential Desert land, land. Yeah. that's that's the whole point and here. it's priced much lower much much lower than uh property that's about to be developed mm-hmm. you know like a you know developer property for subdivisions exactly that's why there's so much that variance by the way this is a, a topic for a whole show all of us have seen uh driven down a street and then two months later you drive down it and you're like there used to be a farm there and now yeah. there's the, you know they're putting it's roads a strip in. mall <laughs> or <laughs> yeah. something exactly so that's why we're here by the way that person wh- whoever's doing that development they're creating equity yeah that's the takeaway from uh, this question but whatever you do you want to create equity you don't want to just uh you know p- make it make property move around if you know what i mean right if you have a question or you want to be in the show reach out to either one of us on landinvestors.com today's topic choosing a real estate specialization this is the meat of the show What are your thoughts, Joe? You know what? I have two, for me, there's two ways to go with this. Um, One is, is there something that you already know a lot about? Okay, so real estate, let me go back. Let me go back for a minute. So real estate specialization, of course, is what do I want to be? Do I want to focus on farmland? Do I want to focus on vacation properties? Do I want to focus on commercial properties? You know, what, what, what's going to be my, do I want to do apartment buildings? What's, you know, what's going to be my specialization? And so I have a lot of people that come to us and, and they're like wide eyed, you know, and they're like, I don't know where to start. So one thing that I suggest is, 
Well, is there something that you already know something about? Do you have the inside track to something? We have many people in our group that come to us from some real estate uh, niche or something they've known about, or maybe they've even worked for a county. Jill, have. this is brilliant. Thank you. I have you. to tell you because this is not what I was going to talk about at all. <laughs> okay. And I'm, I'm learning stuff here. Oh, so thank you. This is a, a brilliant insight on this. Thank you. So, yeah, we have a lot of people that, that already have a lot of information at their fingertips that not everyone does. And they have experience in these areas that they didn't even realize it would be useful now. You know, like there's people in our group that have worked at the counties and dealt with subdividing property and they don't even realize, oh my goodness, I have all this knowledge at my fingertips now. I know how to do this better than anybody and faster and who to call to get this done for myself. Ta-da, that's probably what I should do. And bingo, the answer is yes. So that's one way to really think about and choose a specialization. Um, Another way is start easy. You know, I tell people, let's just start with the basics. Let's start with just flipping some land. Let's start with rural vacant, you know, uh, like vacation or residential or something property and be really open and let your specialization find you because that happens. We have a, we have a, um, some gentlemen in our group that their specialization became kind of, they were the only ones that could figure out how to do certain deeds in certain situations where people passed on. And they became the experts in XYZ County of how to do these transactions. Yeah, and, the technical term is called adverse possession. Right. And, and what you're doing is really solving someone's problem. Right. And they picked up on all these properties that no one else would touch, valuable properties, because no one could figure it out. And everybody would just move on. So it wasn't even their uh, property specialization. It was more of a transaction specialization. And it just came to them, you know. And they were happily off and running, and that's their thing. So those are my two ways that I suggest. What, what else do you have, Jack? Well, you know, I still look, let's look at us. You okay. know, I, this, the, I'm in the specialization now because I was just sick and tired and half dead doing large commercial real estate deals that are, you know, and rooted in healthcare. So I had, I had to get approval from the federal government, the state government. We had to get, a, it took a year. It took a year to do a deal. The payout was pretty good. You know, it was a six digit payout, but that's just not for me. I'd rather just turn and burn and turn and burn properties and, uh, and do, do it in a way that, that is in a data driven way. Mm-hmm. We're all about data here. In our, all the companies that Jill and I have and all the, the, the group of people that we have have all one thing in common. We all love data and we all love manipulating data. Every once in a while, there's people that come to our group who don't start with data. They start with, uh, I don't know, maybe they're interior decorators or something. That's not what this is about. I don't care about any of that at all. In fact, the only one who's close to that maybe is Jill. <laughs> and thank God, by the way. <laughs> I like that we're, stuff. We're not about renovating houses like on HGTV. No. We're about hardcore. I would if it would have made a lot of money, but <laughs> so it I. seriously doesn't. So would I. <laughs> we're about hardcore data manipulation, getting offers in the mail, and buying undervalued property, uh, real estate of all types, and then wholesaling out to somebody who already said, yeah, if you can find a property for $110 a square foot uh, in that zip code, I will buy as many as you can get. Mm-hmm. That's what we're all about here. That's our specialization. And it's like, you know, quite frankly, it's it's like we're printing money. Do you know what my personal specialization is? <laughs> yeah, I, want to tell you. I do. Here's my personal specialization and why, why, why I'm involved in, in, in all of this. I personally want to make a lot of money on property I don't have to visit. Yeah. <laughs> you just want to sit at your desk. Totally. That's what I want. And it could be, I don't know, it could be in another country. It could be on a boat. It could be on the beach. It doesn't really matter. I can be anywhere I want, review property, not have to do anything, call anybody, you know, and, and buy it and sell it. All right, good. This I'm glad this went in this direction. So okay. we can rename this show right now. Well, real estate. What motivates you to be a real estate oh, investor? Really? Because no, it's the same thing. Because if you can answer that question, that's your real estate specialization. Oh, oh, so Jill, so Brian. Jill just Jill just reverse answered it perfectly. <laughs> she doesn't want to go visit the property. She doesn't want to drive for dollars. Yep, bingo. She wants to flip a piece of dirt by talking on the phone because yep. she's super good at it. 
make a good living at it and then uh, be on our way. Yeah. So I want some version. I, that's the end result that I would like, although I'll leave the talking on the phone part to Jill. <laughs> I want to really take a week and, and, uh, and manipulate data, beautifully s- selected data, s- and sit you know in a dark room in front of the computer and make sure that the data is perfect, the letters go out, and I can, and then predict. Here's what it is for me. I want to remove all the risk so that if I know when someone calls us back, on a, you know, four or 5,000 letters that we send out, if 10 or 15 people call us back and two or three properties get purchased or more, usually it's more for us at this point because we do spend so much time setting out perfect offer campaigns, that we're going to make some money. Mm-hmm. That's what this is about. That's what motivates me. Yep. I but, love it. Talking to people doesn't motivate me. Uh, choosing wallpaper, oh my God, no. Right. And if I have to go look at it, I'm not opposed to that. Quite frankly, I, I love going to look at real estate. We don't do it as much anymore because we don't need to. But it's the data piece. Uh, I'll tell you what I don't want. You know what? Let's do that. I, okay, I'm ready. You, go. You go first. Oh, what I what don't. don't want, what don't you want? We already have the go visit it thing. Um, I, I'm thinking, I was thinking about... Um, I, I don't want to pick something or I don't want someone to pick something because I think it's the coolest. Like, I mean, come on. Like uh, doing a big mansion flip just to say that I did it. Oh, because it's sexy. Yeah. I don't want to say, I hey, that $5 million that. property over there. Hey, bought it for five, sold it for four. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? God, I look good losing a million dollars. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> yeah. Like, like I'm going to brag like because I could just throw that much money around. That's no. not what I want to do. Seriously. I agree. And people are out there doing it. So, and they're kind of bragging, yeah, well, you lose a million here, you make two there, whatever. I'm like, that's not what I want to do. <laughs> no. So, mm-hmm. yeah, what I mean, do you I, not want to do? What I don't want to do is uh, I want all the stuff on HGTV. Oh. I don't want any part of that. <laughs> I, I, here's a list of stuff that I don't, that I refuse to do in a real estate transaction because we can at this point. We can aff- easily afford to. And, and this happens all the time. If I need the approval, of anyone to do a real estate deal. And here's an example, a lender, a business partner, uh, a real estate agent. If anyone is going to say yes or no to a real estate deal, I'm out. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm past it. You know, I, I guess I got stung too many times a lot of years ago in, in uh, healthcare, just waiting for people to make a decision. Here's what else I'm not going to do under any circumstance, represent somebody else in their real estate deal. And that's exactly what a real estate agent does. That's what they do for a living. That's the definition of what they do. Mm-hmm. They represent a buyer or they represent a seller in, a, in a buying and selling a house or an office building. You want to talk about a mess. Well, it comes business that tie back into you just having control. Is yeah. that really it? You don't want to have, you don't want to answer anybody exactly. else, which is really how you roll in life, but we, that's a whole other <laughs> show. <laughs> uh, I've heard the way you drive going, I am not going to answer to anybody else on this, in this not that intersection. Bad. I'll tell you between the two of us, Jill, between the two of us, I, I know who's crazier driver than me. Actually, I did that the other day. Kid, I was with kid number three and he said something. He's like, what? No U-turn. I said, number one, read the times. It was like 7 to 9 a.m. We were clearly out of it. And I said, and, and B, we're exempt. And he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was funny. So yeah, you're right. <laughs> if you ask a real estate agent, what they'll, a lot of real estate agents, when they try to justify what they do, they say something like this. T- if I wasn't involved in this transaction, those two people, the buyer and the seller, they would never gotten this deal done. Could and you know what my answer is? Then it shouldn't have gotten done. Yeah. If the buyer and seller are all angry with each other about anything, or if the you know, water here is a problem, or is there some, then that, that's not the right deal for them. So don't, there's no way to justify, if I sound angry about this, it's because I am. Have you heard realtors say that? Oh my God, yes. I say, I don't, I, I'm, I would love a real, I do, I mean, but we know it's, do we think it's true or think it's not true? Like if I had a realtor come to me and say that and say, you know what, this deal would not have got done and went for me, I'd be like, really? So I don't, I maybe, I, I feel bad, but I don't know a lot that push transactions through. I, as, feel, I feel exactly the opposite of bad. Really? I feel great <laughs> <laughs> about all of this because no, I, no, it's, no, it's silly. I know. I don't want to bash on them. But I'm just saying. I do. Okay. <laughs> I know. All right. So I got it. So you picked the property. Your specialization is having control. And because you just went for the 
with well you know what okay so i i want to ask this question please jack so when you set out because you came from your background doing the toughest type of transactions did you specifically seek out the easiest number one okay and then what made you not veer from that well, I was grossly, ridiculously successful from from transaction one. Ah, and then what? And then it just became one thing after another in a positive way, where I was buying property on the internet. This is the first inning of the ball game back then about buying and selling real estate on the internet. So I'm, I, the light went out, light bulb went off over my head multiple times until we landed on but doing mailers, which is what we've done we've done now for decades, but. Uh, the ease of a transaction, the fact that you can buy a piece of real estate on the internet the same way that you can buy a vacuum cleaner. Uh, just there's like 19 things that are just sing to me that in, in, in all through the years have sung to me. Um, but the most of most important of which is the, uh, the, the, the availability of data and then manipulating it, which is just, that was icing on the cake for me. That's when we really started doing thousands and thousands of deals. Right. Finding a buyer, finding a seller, all that stuff's really easy. Exactly. That stuff's not a big deal. It's really, you're right, having the data and knowing what to do with it. Mm-hmm. And your whole concept. I know you're right. I want to back up and just give a little background real quick here. For people who don't know, Jack perfected his way of buying nursing homes by sending out faxes back then, thousands of faxes to, was it brokers and realtors? It was the actually the fax number to the facility. Okay. And it was a closed market. So there were, there are, I don't know, 12 to 15,000 licensed nursing homes in the country. Yeah. Not assisted living buildings. These are nursing homes, post-acute care. They're called different stuff throughout the country. But so it was a finite, it was a finite database. And I literally in, input, this is way back in the day, created a database. And then they got a fax from me every month or so. And, and it uh, worked. Oh my gosh. It and worked. then it transferred it to this and here we are today. A bunch of stuff happened in between. Some of it's great. Some of it's not. But in the end, what it became, Jill, and thank you for clarifying all that, is uh, there's a finite database of 150 million properties in this country. And while it sounds like a daunting task, it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, 15,000 nursing homes to 150 million pieces of property, 150 million APNs, assessor parcel numbers. It's not that many. A lot of them are, fall right off. Uh, the, a tremendous number fall right out based on certain criteria. So, and they should all get letters, and they all will eventually. Mm-hmm. Over and over. Mm-hmm. I love it. I'm glad you asked that. Thank you. What really sings to you about this whole thing? Is it? I mean, you you you, uh, you told us about. Why, why I chose not this being prop- inconvenienced by going to look at real <laughs> exactly. estate, which I completely agree with. It's yeah. totally inefficient. You want me to do what? <laughs> I have to be where when? <laughs> oh no, 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 no! That's not how I roll. No, I'm just kidding. So, as you know, it's kind of funny. You know, I gotta be honest because so this is so much of my life um, is not about money. Seriously, I'm not about. That's why you have me. <laughs> That's true. I'm not about maximizing revenue here or that slash however. I have found our product type seems to have the highest return on investment. So that's why I am sitting here right now. Least amount of output, highest amount of money back. <laughs> so that's it. And I I don't care that I don't, it's not cool for, I don't care that there's not any, or probably ever will be, an HGV, GG, flipping that, flipping that dirt. I don't see that. <laughs> I don't see a- Can you imagine? Flip or flop your, your farm property. I don't see that. Like, oh, they put in new sprinklers. Aren't they pretty, babe? Oh my gosh. How would we you do a show? Could you, you can't. You're right. How would you do an HGTV Could that be show? hilarious? Oh, babe, look at this. We took different pictures with different lighting, and doesn't it look great now? No, we're not going to do that. I'm not going to go plant things and put a fence up and then say, that's my renovation. <laughs> Here's the whole show. Here's the HGTV land flipping show. Oh, it's called no. the Jack and Jill land flipping show, and this okay. is what would happen. Okay. It would be a shot of me, you and me standing next to each other, like that pitchfork yes, picture. Yes, exactly. And, and uh and then they would cut to a picture of a piece of dirt that says purchased for $32,000 and sold for 61 and, and then that the would show be it. would be over. That's it. And it would be both of us high-fiving each other. Each other. That's right. 
Cut to the next scene. Purchased for twenty two thousand dollars, sold for thirty eight. We high five. High five. Cut to the next scene, <laughs> and then it would get it canceled. That's right. It'd be boring <laughs> really fast. <laughs> and right at the end of the episode, it would be. We made one hundred and forty-two thousand dollars this month flipping land. Oh wait, wait, wait! I have a way to make it more exciting. Okay, go ahead. Imagine this: we preface cutting to seeing you in your office for two days manipulating right. data. That's it. And the guy that's how we got there. Called the guy. The guy needs a shave. Oh my gosh! He's in, he's <laughs> t- babe, you got to see this. He's still sitting here. Yep. It's a time elapsed camera. He's still sitting there. Right. That that, right. Right. Yeah. It's a good thing you can't smell. Oh my his gosh! Office. Someone just brought him food and then they left. <laughs> and he's still sitting there. And then I don't know what happened, but the offers went out, and now people are, are sending uh-huh. back stuff. I, I don't. I don't get it. <laughs> there could be like a phone bank, like a, on a public radio station. Or all the people are calling. Some of them are yelling. Yeah. Some of them are happy. Yeah. Like, this is stupid. <laughs> this is stupid. That's a show. <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> How to make millions on land. The stupid way. That's right. <laughs> if you have a question or you want to... Oh, I'm sorry. Join us in another episode where we discuss how to... Oh, join us in another... Yeah. How, join us in another episode where we discuss how to buy your next house for half price. Oh, and then we answer Shamgot's question about extremely low assessed value. I this is this ought to be good. <laughs> You're not alone in your real estate ambition. You know, Jill, tell me. It's no wonder that we made a successful podcast out of such a boring topic. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to pat myself on the back right now. You know what? You're right. We might be able to carry a show for at least five or 10 minutes. Maybe just a pilot. <laughs> this is true. Maybe we could just do a documentary. That might you work. Know, like a one hour documentary uh, about how to flip land in the 21st century. What would we put interesting in there? I don't know. That's the thing. <laughs> Because you don't want to do a whole series on it because it's just not. Once you get past the fact that you can make a bunch of money on it, which our members already know. Mm-hmm. They like move on. Yeah. Then they just repeat it and hire somebody to do it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like our show? Please subscribe and rate us on iTunes or wherever you are listening. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We We are are Jack and Jill, and and this was was the Cash Flow from from Land Show. Show. We are the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price, just so we can flip it for way more. And really fast. Thanks for listening. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.